What's going on everybody, Rob A here, and today we're taking a look at Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series, MPM4 Optimus Prime. Now, this is the Takara version of the figure. I know it says Takara, Tomy, and Hasbro on there. Uh, it was a joint venture between the two companies, but uh, each company also released their own version of this figure. Uh, most notably, the differences in this figure are a lighter shade of gray plastic for the majority of the robot mode, um, <clears throat> as well as some extra paint apps here and there, uh, but not nearly as many as I thought there might be. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so this is a uh, pretty controversial figure overall in the... Um, you know, if, if you frequent uh, Transformers collector boards and things like that, you're going to find this guy's name popping up uh, quite a bit. He's got quite a lot of uh, problems, uh, basically. So uh, I did go with the Takara version. I didn't necessarily care which version I got. In fact, I, I think I like the darker gray of the Hasbro version a little bit, just a smidge better. But uh, to be honest, I have not seen the Hasbro version anywhere uh, and this guy did come up for pre-order so i just went ahead and pre-ordered him through anime export uh, they shipped it really really quickly uh, as soon as it came in stock i think it came in stock on friday and i'm recording this on a monday um, so they they you know processed the the order and shipped it out and had it to my door from japan uh you know in just like one business day basically so pretty cool um as you can see, you know, it's Optimus Prime from the movie. Uh, the box is not that big. Uh, it's actually quite small. I was very surprised. You can see Optimus here and the truck mode there. And again, on the back, you can see all the stuff. He's got a matrix and articulated hands and weapons and things. Ten years of movies. Uh, here's the vehicle mode again. And uh, just to give you an idea of the size of the package, here is MP10 with the box. So yeah, it's not not a very large box, but uh, I guess in the Hasbro version, this guy comes packaged in robot mode. Uh, in this Takara version, the Japanese version, he does come packaged in his vehicle mode. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy open, and we're going to check him out right now. All right, guys, here he is, MP4 Prime. And uh, yeah, he's actually... Um, there's a lot to say about this guy, <laughs> so let's get right into it. Um, so first off, let me just uh, explain to you that uh, this is my second time doing this review. I recorded this review last night. I had like an hour-long review uh, for this guy, and uh, yeah, all of it was lost somehow. Just lost all the footage. I don't know what happened. Um, well, I didn't lose the footage. Like I had all the files, but they're all corrupt. Like they won't, they won't play. Uh, so that's annoying. Um, beyond that, uh, since then, and this is kind of the real important part. Since then, I've actually done a lot of little mods to this figure. Uh, so it's definitely going to change the appearance of the figure overall. Um, so let's get into that really quickly as you can see it's actually a very nice truck mode uh this bit's a little little dented in i just need to kind of uh work that out but it's it's fine for now um as you can see it's it's a nice truck mode i mean there are some gaps here there's a little bit of gapping underneath there um you know there's a, there's a bit on the undercarriage here but the thing to kind of keep in mind uh when you're looking at this is uh just once he gets into robot mode, he becomes huge. Uh, like this vehicle mode is not that big, as you can see in my hands. It's not. It's not that large. Um, but uh, the robot mode is. Uh, you know, it's it's leader. It's not leader. Uh, it is. Well, I mean, it is leader size. It's it's MP10 size in robot mode. He's like the same size as MP10 in robot mode. And I mean, the truck mode also, I guess, scales about the same there. But. Uh, I digress. So, things that I did to change this guy, I did add a little paint to the uh, to the Autobot symbol on the front end there. Uh, I also put a coat of Future Floor Polish on the front 
uh, grill and bumper because uh, this portion of the vehicle mode becomes the robot mode feet. And, uh, you know, obviously there are there paint scraping issues with that. So I just put a, a, a coat of floor polish on there and now it, uh, it works really well. I've actually I've been playing with this guy quite a bit and have no paint scuff or paint marks. So that's pretty cool. And the best part about that is you can reapply as often as you need to. Um, another thing that I have done is on my copy and you can kind of see where it is was I guess this this break in the door here um, there was like a nearly a full millimeter gap there there was a millimeter gap under the uh, windshield and here and there was noticeable bowing in the top of the uh, bonnet here of the truck and uh, all I ended up doing was and I want to I want to definitely give a shout out to uh, Luke LBS I think is his name on the TFW boards he gave this whole big uh, tutorial on how you know all the tabs and things that you need to cut down so basically all I've done is uh, in here there are tabs on either side of this window panel I just cut those tabs by a little bit on both ends just so they have a little more room to maneuver uh, here which helps immensely, immensely, uh, because I found that the problem was that uh, the top of the window was just tall enough that it was, it was rubbing up against the underside of the roof and then causing everything to kind of just like a chain reaction of nonsense. Um, I also found that these two panels were not entirely straight and they're still slightly off, but I think it's mostly these just kind of getting out of alignment and making everything look off center. Um, but there's a, one tab that holds this panel together, or these panels together, the roof here. And uh, that is just a little too thick, so I shaved that down just a little bit as well. And then these hinges up top are reversed out of the package. This hinge is on this side, so it causes an unsightly, like, it, it definitely breaks up this smooth line here because it's got one kind of going up in this direction because it's meant to go on this side, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I did, I just took a, a little watch uh, repair kit that has a, a pin punch in it and I just did that. And I think that's pretty much everything. And once I did all of those things, I did uh, one mod for the robot mode as well and I'll show that off. Uh, shortly but uh, once I did that everything holds together really really nicely and fits you know as about as flush as you would expect on any other uh, transformer toy so uh, I'm quite pleased with that he rolls just fine no problems rolling um, and yeah overall uh, it's definitely improved my uh, overall opinion of the figure now that said uh, getting this guy out of the package, uh, he does require some work. So uh, that is a problem because this is a, you know, this figure is released under the Masterpiece Transformers line. And as such, uh, I kind of expect it to not require modding on my part. Uh, so that is still really, really annoying. Uh, I'm very displeased with that fact. I think this really needed a couple more, uh, you know, passes with the quality control before they actually shipped any of these out. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the fixes that I did were all really simple. All I needed were a pair of uh, snipping pliers and that, that did the whole job for me. So, I mean, well, and the, the pin punch, of course, but you could even use a tiny screwdriver and a hammer for that or, you know, whatever, whatever you've got lying around. But that said, you know, I'm disappointed that with the fact that I had to do modifications to this guy, but I'm I'm glad the modifications were easy, and now that he's all, you know, uh, now that he's all better, I guess, he actually is really, really nice. He's absolutely gorgeous in hand. Um, so, all right, anyway, that's the truck mode, <laughs> which you've now seen pretty, pretty well. You can see the underside as well see the legs all folded up I painted this back here it still needs a few more coats and a bit of sanding because it kind of got a little little mutched back there but um, I did add this um, 
but otherwise this is the underside and when you have them in truck mode you want to make sure that these blue panels which do pop out for robot mode you want to make sure those are pressed in all the way otherwise they will drag on the ground uh, so yeah so there is that um, really quickly he does come with some accessories he's got two blades here uh, I pointed this out in the other review a lot of people were complaining that they are getting uh, two of the same side sword I have not had that be the case and uh, I did want to show these off because they are actually really really nice they're not just clear plastic which is what they look like in pictures but they're actually painted over with this really light metal clear uh, kind of yellow orange and then the silver and it just really really looks lovely uh, in person and then of course there's the blaster which I'll show off a little bit more in robot mode but for now uh, I just wanted to show you guys that you can store these weapons uh, in the back on the trailer hitch if that's what you're into or like me you can just kind of take them out and leave them off to the side like that one other minor thing is the trailer hitch can in fact tow uh, mp10's trailer if you've got one on hand I, I do own one I don't have it with me uh, so I wasn't able to show that off for you guys but uh, rest assured this this is made to accommodate that so all right, enough about the vehicle mode. Why don't we get into the robot mode? All right, transformation into robot mode is really not that difficult. Uh, by the way, I am transforming this to, from truck to robot because it does come packaged in truck mode uh, in the Takara version. Uh, the Hasbro version has him packaged in robot mode, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's really not that difficult, and once you do it once or twice, you get it down no problem. I did it the first time without any instructions, uh, so I think you'll be able to handle it. So first thing you want to do is take the headache rack and just fold that right down against the, the back of the truck here, like that. Next up, we're going to fold, or just press down the smokestacks. Just push those right down. And then we're going to come to the back here. We're going to unpeg the uh, wheel well bits from the back, and they are they're in there solid for sure. So we're just going to pop those out and bring these off to the side here. Uh, we're going to unpeg these bits here, just like so. And now we're going to open up this side panel just like that and bring this whole section up which actually goes a lot more smoothly now that the hinges are not backwards. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to fold this bit in and then fold this bit around. And we'll just swing this guy right there just to get it out of the way for now. And come around and do the same thing on the other side. And get my hands in there. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Let's get that down. Swing this bit up. Swing that in, swing this in. It's okay if this doesn't want to stay down because it actually will be right side up in robot mode, so it's not going to be a problem. You just want to get it out of the way. It's probably not happy because I've been I've been beating it up <laughs> while I've been doing all these modifications. Uh, so anyway, now that we've got that done, we come to the front of the truck here. And we're going to go ahead and unpeg the uh, wheels. I guess you don't really have to do that. They're just pegged into the same section. Uh, but it's just good to get as much stuff out of the way as possible. So we're just going to unpeg that as well. And then get the front grill unpegged. And then this whole section can come up like this. And uh, as you can see, it's just starting to explode into a million pieces. Uh, but don't let that like overwhelm you. Uh, it's really not that bad. And it looks like I've got some little... I don't know what's going on here? I think maybe, huh? We old anyway. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and kind of get the uh, uh, the filters. Sorry, <laughs> you want to pull these out to the side, and now we're gonna open up these bits here, and uh, you can see where I've snipped the. Uh, tabs here 
do that on both sides. And now we're going to kind of bring this whole section up and it's going to separate from the arms and now the front end is dragging my camera around. And so now we've got kind of this, this whole assembly sort of unpegged. Uh, and basically that's how this guy works. You just explode everything out and then just bring it back together in a robot shape. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna just unpeg these from the top here. There's a little slot there and a tab there on either side. And I'll show you guys again. Let's swing those back, that's fine. Uh, right here is where I nipped this little tab. And it's probably even a little bit too small now. It barely even holds in together. Uh, but with all the other parts that hold it, it really is not a problem at all. So we got that going on. Uh, so now we're going to swing this section back. And that's got our robot head on it here. And, uh, all right. <clears throat> And now here's the fun part. So when I first uh, did this bit, there's a little hinge right here that you have to push back. When I first did this, and even now, it there's so much resistance here and it feels like it wants to break, but it's not, it's fine. Uh, and that will expose the matrix chamber. And then the matrix is right here. We're gonna flip this up. And I'm just gonna show this to you guys right now because it's a little bit easier. Uh, you can open this guy up. pop the matrix out and then there is the transformers matrix of leadership complete with two giant holes I don't know why they did holes on both sides uh, maybe just to make it easier because I knew this thing was gonna be tiny and everybody's hands were gonna be just struggling to get it in there but uh, there you go just pop that in and it slides in I'll show that off a little bit more in robot mode but for now uh, we're just doing that. So uh, then we're going to take these bits, which are going to become the robot arms, and just unpeg those. Kind of get these all out of the way. And you can kind of see, we've just got just a big mess of stuff. So now we're going to go ahead and take this big mess, get all these out of the way, swing this bit back here, like so. It's the real trick, just getting everything out of the way. All right, swing it back, down and around. These get out of the way, arms get out of the way. And we'll go ahead and just uh, flip these bits up as well. Those are gonna become the shoulder stalks. All right. So now this is all close together. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull the legs out of the way. You can separate the legs now. And just pull them out of the way. You can actually pull them on their joint. They extend at the hip and kind of get out of the way and really allow you to get in and mess with all this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and bring this guy down and now just compact the chest until it clicks into place and then we can take this die cast piece and just bring it up and that'll peg in right there okay so now the next step is we've got these panels I'm just gonna fold this out of the way this out of the way all right so now we have the panels with the uh, smokestacks on them I want to take the smokestacks and swing them up like that and just tab them in up like that and just tab it in now we're going to bring this whole section backwards keeping these bits uh, as tight as you can because there are two little slots down there one on each side and these little tabs here are going to go right into those let me see if I can and I do apologize, this thing is just so, there's just so much going on. It's hard to kind of keep it all focused, uh, but I'm going to do what I can for you. So bringing this back, and then just seating it in those 
spots right there. All right, all right. So now what we want to do is let's let's go ahead and do the legs because they're honestly just getting in the way now. Uh, so let's go ahead. We've got the legs separated. Uh, we want this blue panel to open up here. And one thing we can actually do right now is this blue bit on the back. We're just going to pull that out a little bit. It's only a couple of millimeters that it moves, uh, but it allows this thing to really swing back and out of the way, which is very helpful. We're going to bring this side bit up after folding in this little pipe. And then we're going to bring this all up and make sure it snaps into place. Bring the wheel down and then bring this piece around there. Next we're going to go ahead and uh, convert the foot. We're just going to go ahead and bring the toes out to the sides like so. Fold that up and peg it into place and then tab it all together. Then we're going to go ahead and just push your finger right here by the knee and that's going to pop this little armor section out and then you can put the foot all the way up and there you have one leg done. Do the same on the other side. Pull this bit out. Swing the, the wheel down. Oh, make sure you get the uh, this guy in here. And then tab that in. And that's going to fold around. Do the same with the foot. Peg it in. Swing it up. Open that. And peg that together. And there you have his feet. Now we've just got this big mess going on up here. So let's see what we can do about this right now. So uh, what we want to do here is go ahead and slide these sections out to the side around the head. And then go ahead and bring them down. And we want to go ahead and press them in as hard as you can until they snap into place. Just like that. Uh, and then I'll show you guys another mod I did. I just cut down, I trimmed this little tab that's on the inside of the front of the engine block area uh, just so that it has a little wiggle room inside this slot because I hear that helps. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and swing this bit back just like so. And then it's going to just sit right in there just like that take the uh, headlight and twist that back and we'll do the same on the other side bring this section down until it tabs firmly into place Not sure why it doesn't want to tab firmly for me here. Okay, there we go. That's got it. <clears throat> Do then the same uh, same deal over here. I want to swing this back around, just like that. That bit's going to go in there. The headlight's back. Now we can swing these panels around to the front. Just like that. Now we can get the, uh, the arms in here. And what we want to do is you're, you see this big slot here. And there's a bit up here. Those are all going to tab together. So you want to bring this up and tab it on and then push it until it snaps into place. So it'll actually have a lock there. Do the same on the other side until it actually tabs securely into place. And we are at the home stretch, folks. Uh, so like I showed you before, you can adjust the legs. I prefer his legs up against his torso like that. It does uh, impede his ability to move his hips, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, 
So for right now, let's just uh, turn this guy around. So there's a couple of things you can do with the backpack here. This is the official transformation. Uh, I'll show you. Let's just move these out of the way. All right, so the official instructions say to uh, move it like this and then bring this guy up and around and it'll tab in here and then tab in like that. And then there's another little tab here that's going to go right into this slot. And it mostly succeeds at that. If you just, you know, push it all down, it'll stay. And that, that looks all right. Um, it's not too bad. And I'll show you guys how it looks from the front. So we'll twist this around, do the same business over here. And that's going to tab in just like that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead to the shoulders, bring the filters up. This whole section can come up and just kind of sit however you like it. I kind of like them just chilling up here, just like that. Then we want to take the arm piece, this little bit here. We're going to flip it right around push out the armor panel and then push that down. So like that, swing this around and then push that down. And then all there is to do is adjust the, the wheels, which you can bring down like this, bring like that, and then bring these wheels up. And then, uh, of course, the eyebrows here, truck brows, I don't know what you want to call them. They are a little difficult to, uh, to position on my copy, just the joints are really, really hard in some places and, like, loose in others, so they, they don't quite want to move the way I want them to move, but uh, with just a little bit of finagling, you can get, get it going. And then there you have... Movie Masterpiece Optimus Prime in robot mode. And uh, the other thing you can do with the backpack here, this is how it looks right now. Um, what I like to do is to actually take it, uh, unpeg this section here like so. We're going to actually just bring it up farther. So we're going to unpeg it from here swing it in more until it's like right up against this section and then uh... nope that's not right <laughs> there we go that's what I wanted so just like that um, so just like that guy and then we can do the same on the other side and we'll see the uh, the difference and how that actually looks. There we go. So right there. And now I think that gives a much cleaner robot mode. Uh, nothing going on here at the waist, and uh, really really helps to clean it up. So. There you have Optimus Prime in robot mode. All right, guys, so uh, yeah, in robot mode, this guy really, really shines. Uh, he's got all the articulation you could want. Uh, it's got ratcheting arms here. He's got bicep swivel. He's got elbow joint that actually goes quite far up. Really nice there. Uh, he's got the wrist swivel. He's got articulated fingers going on here. He's got one pointer finger, and then the rest are uh, stuck together. You can get a little thumbs up symbol going on there. He's got a little articulated thumb, so that's that's kind of neat. Uh, he does have a waist swivel. It is uh, hindered by the legs being up so high, but you can pull the legs down and then uh, kind of rotate however you want. 
Uh, it's still a little hindered by the by the the backpack, but uh, I think it's enough to you know get get whatever poses you really want out of him. I think, personal opinion, uh, he does have outer leg movement there. Uh, he's got a forward and back ratchet. Uh, he's got a thigh swivel. He's got a really nice deep double knee bend, which is awesome. Uh, and he's got a really nice deep foot bend, a little bit upward in the foot, and a little bit side to side as well with that. So, he does have his accessories, which we should take a look at here. Um, so, let's get into those right now. Uh, so he does have the blaster and the two blades. Let's do the blaster first. Uh, so here's the blaster. It's very simple. Uh, not a lot of paint work. There's just some scorching on the barrel there. Uh, and I mean, the detail is nice. So it's got that going on. But uh, beyond that, it's, it's kind of boring. Uh, but you can have this in his hand. Should you so desire that. And it just pegs in like all the other uh, masterpiece accessories into his palm. And then, you know, you can just hold that however you like it. So you can, you know, take out as many innocent bystanders as you would like him to. There we go. <clears throat> and, of course, he also has his wrist blades. And the way you uh, plug those in is you got to move the, f the hand out of the way. Just like that, and then, uh, oop, wrong side. You just pop these in behind his hands, and he's got some sweet Energon blades. And a lot of people don't like the the hands having to bend to get those uh, into place, but I, they really don't bother me uh, because most of the time you can't see them behind the uh, behind the blades. And honestly, just, you know, he just looks cool with them. He's very, you know, it's got a very, like, Wolverine-ish sort of uh, appeal with those blades going on. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, also, he does have the face change gimmick, which I'm sure you guys want going on. Uh, so, you know, he's got his normal head going on here, or the, the face mask. Rather, his battle mask he's got available. Or, if you want, you can lift up his head. Rotate it around. And... Just like that, he can also have his Mopey Ray Romano face. There you go. Uh, I was a woolly mammoth in a movie once. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, as for me, I'm just going to put this right back. Right back to that faceplate. You don't need to take your face off to talk. You're a robot, man. Come on. Come on. What are we doing here? Uh, so yeah, super easy uh, switch over between those different uh, faces. Really, really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean... The last time I did this video yesterday, <laughs> I was uh, I was pretty mad at this figure um, because you know there were a lot of problems with it uh, out of the package, and that is not an insignificant thing. Um, but I have to say, with just the tiniest little bit of uh, of work on my part, uh, you know, he's actually a really really solid, really cool figure. To, uh, to display and play with and mess around with. Um, oh, let me do some size comparisons, I guess, while I'm talking. So, all right, I'll show off him with uh, MP10 here. As you can see, they're right just about the same height here. And then, of course, with MP3 Bumblebee. I think they look great together, uh, personally. Just the style, the paintwork, all, all that stuff. Just really, they blend together quite well. Um, so they look... Absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I was really mad about it, and, uh, you know, I'm still not thrilled. You know, it's it's a masterpiece figure. I shouldn't have to mod it uh, in order to, you know, get it to, to work properly. And that's 
that's a big deal. That is not insignificant. Um, but at the same time, for the price that I paid for this guy, uh, you know, considering how much I've paid for other Masterpiece figures, um, I'm not that upset about it. Like, it's annoying, but I don't regret my purchase. Um, so basically all I can say is, you guys see, I'm sure, you know, what, what the deal is with this figure. Uh, you have to decide on your own whether or not it's worth it for you. I'm personally happy with it. Uh, there was nothing, you know, I needed crazy, you know, exotic tools to fix. And it, it was all very simple. I just did it in my PJs on the couch, you know what I'm saying? So not a big deal. Uh, but at the same time, it shouldn't have, have to have been done in the first place. So take that as you will. Um, I enjoy this figure. I like this figure. Uh, despite its faults, I recommend it. If you want to, I'd say you could wait and see if they do a re-release down the line with the you know all the problems fixed. Um, but you know that's that's going to be up to you. So that guys is going to do it for this review. I want to thank you so very much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm going to go try and upload this. Uh, and if it doesn't work, I'm not doing a third one. So. <laughs> so thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.